they are different in a way that favors the government. And so how about on this question? Let's stay with the legal. Listen to the Attorney General here, because we know in the past, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed has said, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. He does not dispute being involved. So if he says that in a military commission, here's the question that was put to the Attorney General. I think the death penalty can certainly be sought. It's an open question about whether or not somebody can plead guilty in a military commission and still receive the death penalty. That, I think, is still an open question. Is it a way out of the death penalty? I don't think so. Given uh, the way the death penalty has evolved, they will probably be... I think a lot of people are familiar with the guilt phase and the penalty phase. Even if he pleads guilty in the guilt phase, I assume they will go forward with a penalty phase about whether he receives the death penalty. There have been so few military commissions that some of the procedures are simply unknown. They're going to have to improvise to a certain extent. But, you know, in the real world, there is no way they are going to simply let Khalid Sheikh Mohammed plead guilty and walk out of the possibility of the death penalty. I just don't see that happening. Uh, stay with us. I want to do more on the legal, but I want to get to this political question because Peter Bergen, you know, we've talked to, in recent weeks, Egypt, all the uprisings in North Africa and the Middle East. You think it's put al-Qaeda already back on its heels, maybe even more back on its heels politically. One of the president's most powerful reasons for closing Gitmo, one of General Petraeus's reasons for closing Gitmo, is that they make the case that it's a recruiting tool that al-Qaeda uses it as a recruiting tool to say, look what the Americans are doing to us, fairly or unfairly. Is this potentially, potentially an opening? Well, I think it's, this is not just uh, something that al-Qaeda uses as a recruiting tool. I mean, this, if you poll on the question of Guantanamo around the world, uh, particularly in the Muslim world, seven out of ten Muslims in, you know, uh, very major polling, uh, you know, disapprove of the handling of Guantanamo. So it's not just about al-Qaeda, it's just also about our standing generally. Will this affect it more largely, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, I think, no, I mean, I don't see it's being, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is not, somebody who's a huge hero in the, in the Muslim world. So I don't see this as substantially changing uh, that narrative. I mean, what it does, of course, it, it, it does, it just shows the continuity between the second Bush term and Obama, of which there are many, Guantanamo being the main exhibit. But. Uh, and Jeff Tubin, the ACLU called this, quote, a devastating blow to the rule of law. Now, we know the ACLU and other liberal organizations want Gitmo closed. They would prefer these to be civilian trials in the federal court. But is it a devastating blow to the rule of law, or is that more of a political reaction than a legal reaction. You know, I, I think that's, that's really in the eye of the beholder, but it is a very substantial reverse by the Obama administration. I mean, in, in a world where presidents and presidential candidates don't make many very specific promises, this was a very specific promise by the, by the then Senator uh, Barack Obama to close Guantanamo. And that promise is out the window. Now, whether the fault lies with his own administration for mishandling the process or it lies with cowardly politicians who grandstand about the risks of civilian trials that really were not much risks, you know, we'll never know. But the fact is that promise is out the window and it is a big change. Uh, 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 go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask this question first to Jeff and then to Peter. So we're almost 10 years since 9-11. We're almost 10 years since 9-11 and none of these I'll call them alleged terrorists, uh, to be polite, have been brought to trial. Uh, does this finally, Jeff, at least maybe get some closure, or will we be now in years of wrangling about how to conduct the military commissions? Well, it, it's at least the beginning of the end of the legal process, I think. It, it is an outrage. It is a disgrace. Ten years of holding people without trial is something that is really contrary to uh, the American system of justice. Now, whether a military tribunal is an adequate substitute for, for a civilian trial, I guess we're now going to watch that unfold. But certainly the status quo was, was completely unacceptable of holding these people year after year without any kind of trial. At least there's going to be some kind of trial now. And it's, it's a... I don't know if disgrace is the right word, but it is tough for the families of the victims to not have had any closure, any procedures, any due, due diligence and justice for those who were killed to have the perpetrators, alleged perpetrators, brought to trial. Uh, Peter, does it play out in the world? Is that part of the argument? They've been holding these guys for years. The United States is not a fair and just society. Or does that matter? I, I, of course it does. I mean, the 10th anniversary of 9-11 is coming up. That's everybody's, everybody knows that. Uh, you know, I think, as, as, as Jeff has indicated, I mean, I think one of the kind of tragedies here is uh, uh, federal terrorism trials in New York City have like a 100% conviction rate. Military tribunals are very untested. We've had four. In fact, ironically, I'd prefer to be tried in a military tribunal than in New York because so far some of the sentences that have been handed down in the military tribunals have been rather weak compared to the civilian system. Hmm. So, so if... if, if 
I hate, I don't want to speak the sentence, but if you were one of them, uh, you would prefer to be in the military commission. Well, it depends if they want to be a martyr, you right. know, sort of a, maybe a, a wash. Right. But uh, ironically, military uh, trials have, have tended to favor the defendants right. more in terms of the sentencing. Right. But you don't expect that in this case, do you, Mr. Tubin? Uh No, I, I think when it comes to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, a guy who has boasted about his role in 9-11, uh, that, that only ends with the executioner. Jeff Tubin, Peter Bergen, gentlemen, thanks both for your help tonight. Ahead. You're counting, right? 582 days until the presidential election of 2012, and tonight we have our first official candidate. Take a look. Make a guess.